Today is the most excited I've been in quite a while, and it's all because of one man, this man. Kylian Mbappe donning the black and white stripes of Newcastle United. To kick things off today, we have the first two games of the season, Manchester United in the Community Shield, and then Sheffield United at home. Hoping that second one's going to be a demolition job. Let's see how we get on. So yes, folks, we are back. We're here at Newcastle. It's the start of season number five. Remember last episode? Yeah, we left things on a dilemma. Makoko or Van Dyke? Did I sign either of them? Am I going to sign either of them? I suppose is probably the better question. Um, you'll notice here in the transfer activity, Virgil van Dyke's name is absent, but I haven't bought him either. I decided in the end that for a 34-year-old, it was, it was quite a lot of money. And, uh, I've cancelled it for now. I mean, look, there's still another month for the transfer window. I could still change my mind, but a bit of common sense took hold, I think, with this one. At 34 years old, that pace is going to start to drop off quite a lot. And he did want quite a lot of money a week. Now, you might have spotted it. Makoko is still pending on confirmation, but I don't think I'm going to sign him. I still could, to be honest. Uh, however, I have identified a transfer target who I do think would be a really good addition to the team. And it's Paulo Bernardo, the Portuguese international. 23 years old, of course, Tolisso departed in the summer. I feel like we've been kind of lacking a little bit of centre mid quality this year, um, kind of on the backups. Uh, Zarkaria is fine, Tolisso's okay, but there was a gap there I felt like to fill a void. And while Paulo Bernardo is that man I have summoned to hopefully fill that gap. He had a fantastic season last year at Benfica, nine goals, seven assists, a 7.27 average rating. Recently broke into the Portuguese national team. And to be honest, with the exception of his finishing, perhaps his heading. He is just a super well-rounded player, a really versatile player, can play a whole host of roles. And I think for a fee of £40 million, it's a pretty good bargain. So he is possibly going to be joining us. The other man who is currently involved in a transfer is a transfer on the outs, and it's Junior... Junior, we're just going to call him Junior. Remember this guy signed on a free because I didn't want anyone else to get him? Well, as it turns out, I've not really been wowed, shall we say, by his development. We had a transfer offer from Club America, who we've stolen a few wonder kids from. They bid, if we just have a look at things here, 16 million up front, rising to 21.5 million pounds. For a 19-year-old who's never played for us, that's pretty good money, especially because he isn't ever really going to fit in my system, at least with wide men. So uh, yeah, thank you, Junior, for your services. Um, very glad that a team is willing to pay your overinflated price. We have still got Makoko here, but I'm thinking at this point, I'm probably not going to sign him. I don't think we need him. I mean, look, he's got a release clause. So in January, we can always trigger it again if we change our mind. But ultimately, I think with Paulo Bernardo coming in and Junior going out, we're going to be left with in the region of about £70 million to spend. I'm probably just going to end up investing that on some really good young prospects. I feel like at this point, that kind of makes the most sense, just to go and sign a load of regens, help the team be built for the future. Now, since the Club World Championship, which was not that long ago, we've had a pretty standard pre-season, about a month of away games in China. We've had a lovely time in China, we've had a lovely time on the road in pre-season, but now we're at home and we're playing at Wembley, which at this point does feel like a second home, given how much we've played here. If we look at things going into the first game of the season, this is the team that lines up today. Kylian Mbappe makes his debut up front alongside Calvert-Lewin, Yusuf Demir in at advanced playmaker, Havertz and Bellingham playing as the centre mid pairing, left back we have Alfonso Davies, right back Livramento on his new contract at the back. Gvardiol, Tamori, Fafana, and Ramsdale still in goal. This is very much a full-strength team. No messing around. Mbappe would love to see a hat-trick from you. I've spent the big bucks. Let's see if he can live up to the price tag. As much as this is the community shield and on the, the grand scale of footballing competitions, it's not the pinnacle. It's not the Club World Cup final, basically. After the players they've taken away from me over the years, I do want to get some revenge. I do want to beat them every time I play them. I'm hoping... That this squad here, which is our best team and probably the best team I'm going to have all year in Football Manager, is just going to absolutely murder them today. I want a 3 or 4 nil victory. I want to, I don't know, bask in their blood. Does that, is, that, is that too far? That might be a bit too far. We don't actually need to kill them physically. Metaphorically, of course, Manchester United lawyers, please do not come for me. Right, we need to get off to a good start here. And the fact that Maguire has been afforded that kind of time and space isn't something I necessarily love. Wampasaka bringing it forward. I feel like him and Alfonso Davies have their own little rivalry 
out on the near side of the pitch here. They constantly seem to clash, it feels like, in the matches that we play. United, oh my word, Ramsdale, what a save that is. I thought United were playing it nice and patiently out from the back. Suddenly, Bruno Fernandes shot from range and Ramsdale called into action early on with a great stop. And what's even better is seeing us deal with the, uh, the corner. Could we hit them on the counter? Could Kylian Mbappe do something magical on his debut? He's in the middle. We've got a free kick. Um... And the, the highlights ended. Okay, never mind. Maybe it'll come later, the magic. All I'm saying is, I've spent a lot of money on Kylian Mbappe. And, like, he is a magician. I feel like he's got to do magical stuff for that price tag. I feel like there's certain players in Football Manager you just expect to do different stuff in the match engine that you don't see anyone else do. Kylian Mbappe is that level of player for me. So, I've got all eyes on him. Maybe I should have some eyes on our defence. Because Greenwood, all oh my word... I... I don't know how that's not gone in. How's that not gone in? I want to watch a replay of this because Greenwood goes round the goalkeeper, shoots, and oh my word, who is that? I think it was Tamori. He's heard that Van Dyke's on the prowl. He's turning up with that kind of heroic defending. Kicks it against the post. Ramsdale collects. We live to fight another day. Not even half an hour played here. But end-to-end -end stuff, both teams having opportunities. We're yet to have a shot on target. Mbappe, though, plays in Calvert-Lewin. He's very, very wide. Needs to hold up the ball well. Does just that. Davies to Calvert-Lewin. Back to goal. Plays it across to Liveramento. He shoots blocked. Kai Havertz does not make the same mistake, though. Gets it around the defender. Bends it into the... But it's been disallowed for offside. Where was, where was the offside here? Oh, okay. Um, mm. Never mind. It's still nil-nil. Vardiol with the ball deep here, looking to build out from the back. Kai Havertz been very involved in the play, it feels like. And oh my word, that is a ball and a half to Kylian Mbappe, who scores on his debut. It took 30 minutes for the magic show to commence. It's, it's offside. It's offside again. Again. Football manager. Are you just trolling me? I mean, was he off? We've not even seen a line. He was onside. It's a disgrace. What is happening today? Throw in on the far side, still nil-nil, the referee and the linesman conspiring against us. But maybe we can turn the tide of battle here for Farner, Davies, the build-up play here superb and the finish lacking from the left-back. Not really known for his ability to finish. We saw it on display there. Yeah, good save by the keeper, but we should be scoring in that opportunity. And I'll tell you what, second half of this first half, we have been dominant, we have been rampant, but somehow... Yet to find the breakthrough. I say all of this. Could we? No, never mind. Half time is coming. That was not a good effort. So at the break here, still nil nil. Not entirely sure how we have been dominant, and yet somehow we've not had a goal that's counted just yet. Kylian Mbappe, by the way, on a 6.3 on his debut. Not ideal. Corner whipped in Calvert Lewin there. We'll take that. Goal number four of the season for him. For some reason, kind of. The point at which goals for the season reset happens halfway through the Club World Cup. So half of Calvert-Lewin's goals for the Club World Cup count towards his season tally. We'll just roll with it. That is number four for the year. And whilst it's come from a set piece, I feel like on the balance of play, we have deserved that today. Another set piece for us here. Demir looking for another ball of quality. Guardiola glancing header all the way over the far post, but not a million miles away. Manchester United... Struggling from set pieces. And you know what? 25 minutes left here. I'm hauling off Kylian Mbappe. I've seen enough. We're going to protect him. Make sure he's ready for the second game of today's episode against Sheffield United. I'm sure he'll get a goal for us there. Elsewhere, I'm going to bring in Declan Rice alongside Adiemi. The fact that we can bring on players like Declan Rice and Adiemi on off the bench. I th I, that bodes pretty well, doesn't it? Also, Davies struggling a little bit. We'll take off Luca Dean. I think that is a logical sub. Davies is a player who, of course, has had a fair few issues with injury out at left back. Don't want him to aggravate anything. And of all the games to kind of make him push through the pain barrier, to push through the, the well, to the point where his condition ain't that good. This doesn't feel like the right game. Oh, my word. Adiemi hits the woodwork from nowhere. The finish, the technique was superb. Unfortunately, not on target. And I've got to remind myself, this game is still only 1-0 to us. If it's still drawing after 90 minutes, I believe it goes straight to penalties. Demir threaded through. Can he finish it to put the game beyond doubt? He can't, but that man can. Karim Adiemi, never going to sell him. Definitely not Definitely not still thinking about selling him this month. On off the bench for Kylian Mbappe. Does what we brought him on to do, which is, uh, well, score a tap-in into an open goal. Calvert-Lewin dropping in deep. Demir is the advanced playmaker running on ahead. 
And then the ball across here, a bit fortunate, really. Parried by De Gea straight to Adiemi. He tucks it away 2-0. Bob's your uncle. We're winning another Community Shield. So another piece of silverware for the collection. Yes, it's the Community Shield. Yes, it's not the biggest trophy in the world, but it's still a nice one to get. And it makes up for when we lost to Manchester United in the Champions League semi-final last year. Just a little bit. I mean, we have already beaten them in the, the Club World Cup since then. I'm, I'm going to be honest, this is nice, isn't it? This doesn't make up for the Champions League semi-final. I can put on a brave face and lie to you and say I feel better about last season. Now, I absolutely do not. All this does really is fuel my desire to win the Champions League this coming year. Not a bad little way to start the season with a win in the Community Shield. It was fairly convincing all in all. Demir picked up Man of the Match with two assists, which is always great to see. In terms of the second match today, we are taking on Sheffield United. They are predicted to finish bottom. I'd like to believe we'll notch up a cricket score. We've got an easy start to the season. Liverpool and Man City loom on the horizon. But for now at least, let's focus on what's ahead of us. Sheffield United, hopefully an opportunity to get off to a really emphatic start this season. Okay, folks, we are back. First game of the league season, Jack. Have you done any transfer business? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. What have I done? I've signed Virgil van Dijk, everyone. I couldn't not do it. I just regretted it. As soon as I cancelled the deal between last episode and this episode, it's all I could think about. I was in bed last night just thinking I shouldn't have done that. So I haven't done it, and I've gone and bought him. Um, yeah, he's a good player, isn't he? Virgil van Dijk, 34 years old. He is going to compete with Tomori at centre-back. Yes, it's not a long-term move. Yes, it's not really part of a long-term plan. But he is very, very good. And it is Virgil van Dijk. And we had injury issues last year. Let's not forget, an injury crisis at the back is kind of what cost us, I think, a run in the Champions League. So having Virg can only be a good thing for that. Elsewhere, Paulo Bernardo has joined the club. The Portuguese centre mid, very, very good player. Very kind of just all-round good guy. Um, he's good at everything, not really great at anything. But that's all I really want from a backup centre mid who can play a whole host of positions. So I'm very happy about that. Elsewhere on the outs, Junior has left us for that £21 million. Charlie Setford has departed on loan. And well, we still have £33 million to spend. Although, uh, probably, while we're here, we should probably get back underneath the wage budget, shouldn't we? Let's do that. Now we, we all feel calmer now. There isn't some big red text on the right side of this screen. But anyway, this is the first game of the league season. In terms of the squad we're going with, this is the team. Virgil van Dijk slots straight in at the heart of the defence. The rest of the team is kind of what you'd come to know and love. And our bench looks terrifying. You've got Livakovic, Tamori, Mbabu, Luka Dean, Godfrey, Rice, Bernardo, who's just joined, Ransford Yeboa, and Adiemi. Yeah, it's quite good. Um, worth noting, Luka Dean has picked up a little bit of a knock, but that's not a problem because we have Harwood as our third choice left back, and he's a pretty tidy player as well. Now, maybe I'm putting a bit too much pressure on the players here, but given the fact that Sheffield United are predicted to finish bottom, given the fact that for the last couple of seasons they've avoided the drop by just a singular spot, I do expect us to demolish them today. This is the kind of game that we should win comfortably and easily, and I'm hoping that is going to be what we see in this match. I did think actually going into this game about possibly trying to press more rather than regrouping, just trying to really take the game to them. You know what? We'll wait for this highlight to finish, but I might go and do that now. Showing a bit of disrespect to Sheffield United, really. De kind of just getting rid of our traditional transfer strategy and tactical approach in favour of going all out attack. At the they've just scored. They are I Okay, okay. You know what? I didn't want to do it, but they've made me do it. We're counter-pressing everyone. They can't stop me. We're pressing from the off. They've scored against us after five minutes. This was not meant to happen. This wasn't in the script. I didn't sign up for this. Hmm. I mean, it was a nice goal. It was a nice goal. Liveramento caught out of position. Macias pulls the ball back, and then it's Morelos who hammers it into the bottom corner from inside the penalty area. Let, let's make that tactical change happen. I need a response. It would be a little awkward after all the transfer additions if we go on to lose the first game of the season against the team predicted to finish bottom. I've tried to minimise the number of changes to the team so we can you know, maintain the cohesion that we have. Um, I'm hoping that's going to be the case. What happened here? Referee? He's given Sanderberg a yellow card. Did, was there a push off the ball? I saw a man fall over off the ball. I guess the ref played an advantage and there was none. Demir with the free kick hits it. Ruben Blanco. Unconvincing goalkeeping. Demir with the corner. 
whips it in. Fafana's under it, heads it. What a save by the keeper to turn it round the post. Sheffield United playing it out from the back. Virgil van Dijk wins it, though, and now we break. Mbappe can't score. It's tackled away, but only as far as Davies. Options in the middle. One is Killian. He hits the crossbar with the header. And Sheffield United are hanging on by a thread in this game. They've scored, really, with their only shot on goal all game. Can we create something else? Not there, we can't. Calvert-Lewin heads over. Corner on the far side. Yusuf Demir. So many players in the middle. One of them is Fafana. Another was Calvert-Lewin, and in the end, it's actually Mbappe who's got it over the line. I feel like, like between Fafana, Calvert-Lewin and Van Dijk, we've got perhaps some of the best aerial presences in the game for set pieces. Calvert-Lewin won a header that three or four players contested. Mbappe was there. It's not the most memorable of first goals for the club, but he's got his first. That's going to get the juices and confidence flowing. Now, now he can go and score a hat-trick in this game. I say all of this. If Sheffield United get another, I'm going to be livid. They're in possession as well. Should I be scared? I'm hoping we're going to win the ball and hit them on the counter. But Elise is through and a huge stop out of Ramsdale. Not called into action very much in this game. In the end, massive, massive stop there. Keeps the game at 1-1. Might still be a bit of defending to do from this set piece though. Whipped in, headed. Oh my word, just get it away, boys. Someone, what is happening? I don't like it. Elise still through. Squares it. It's in the penalty area. Well, I'm going to do some desperate defending here. I don't even know what I'm witnessing. Fry to Elise. The highlight just ends. We're fine. It's all fine. It's still 1-1. We very nearly went behind again. I'm throwing a water bottle. I'm throwing a water. I'm not happy. I'm not. Look, they can, they can cry the players all they want. I am not happy with what I've seen out there. Throwing a water bottle. Motivate the rest of them. This team are predicted to finish bottom. We're meant to score a load here. And instead, we're just wasting all our opportunities and, well, not defending very well. That's a good start to the second half, though, isn't it? Two minutes in, Davies to Calvert-Lewin. We score. Okay, I forgive him. Well, throwing water bottles works, everyone. If you need to get some performances out of your players, just throw a water bottle at them. Davies using his pace to get down the byline. Uncontested crossing. Calvert-Lewin wins it well. And that is the reason why I have Calvert-Lewin in ahead of Adiemi as Mbappe's partner in crime. I feel like between Mbappe and Adiemi, we lack a little bit of aerial ability. I feel like in Football Manager, that is particularly important this year in the final third. I know, well, Calvert-Lewin's forehead coming in clutch. And now it might be Mbappe's turn. He's dispossessed, but Havertz has it. Davies has it. Hits it into the bottom corner. Ten minutes into the second half. This is what we wanted to see. This is what I expected to see. Everyone just breathe a sigh of relief. Let's calm down a little bit. And with it, we go top of the league. I mean, it's the first day of the season, but still, top of the league. Havertz to Davies, hits it in. Goalkeeper, not sure what he's doing there, to be honest. And a good finish by Davies. He missed an opportunity in the previous game, set the record straight there, and we could even get another. Calvert-Lewin, assisted by Yusuf Demir, goal number six for the season. And yes, it is a corner. At the same time, I feel like when we have the kind of players we do in the air, the likes of Guardiola, Calvert-Lewin, Van Dijk, I expect us to score a lot of corners this year. This is a team that should be scoring a lot of kind of corners and set pieces. Oh my word, Davies jumped into that tackle there. I feel like as we approach the hour mark, maybe I should look to make some changes in this game. Get on some fresh legs. Especially, oh my word, if they score that. That was a long range effort. It hits the woodwork. Goes away from danger. Elise whips in the ball. Back post over everyone. Bellingham heads it away. Referee... Is questioning if that hit a hand. Is he accusing Bellingham of handling the ball there? I feel like he headed that. Sorry, who's handball who has handballed that? Was that Jude Bellingham again? I've got questions. Why has Jude Bellingham handballed that? He's uncontested. There's no one behind him. Jude, what are you doing, mate? If you want to go play handball, go and play handball. But this is soccer, my friend. It's football. We play with our foot or we play it with our sock. That's why it's in the name. Right, Ramsdale, please turn hero for us. Elise over the penalty. Hits it. Ramsdale with the save. Maybe they knew what they were doing. Maybe oh, Bellingham, I thought I'd hit him on the hand again there as it went away. Maybe Bellingham and Ramsdale planned that before the game. You know, it was to make him look like the hero. Set up the penalty. Ramsdale saves it and just looks, I don't know, like a god. Demir, throw on goal, hits it just wide of the post. We're looking for a fifth here. This has been a mad game. 
I feel like despite the fact we're 4-1 up, we could easily end up conceding a goal here. They have been pretty good going forward and creating opportunities. We do, however, have possession at the moment. Gvardiol to Virgil van Dijk, who on his debut hasn't had a great deal to do at the back, really. Looking confident in possession here, our defence, as Gvardiol steps out with it. Calvert-Lewin plays through Demir, who should finish it. And he wallops it against the crossbar. It's still 4-1, and I'm not sure how. Tackle by Demir, gets in the interception. Mbappe bringing the ball forward, all on his lonesome. Might go all the way, does go all the way, slots into the bottom corner. That's the kind of magical stuff I was talking about. The kind of things you expect from a Kylian Mbappe. Stuff that other players just don't do in the Football Manager match engine. The throw in here, a bit wayward. Demir sticks in a toe, gets it to Mbappe, but a lot to do here. Just dances through the defence like a slalom skier and then slots it in the bottom corner to make it 5-1. 15 minutes left here. Maybe I should make some changes. Both strikers are on for hat-tricks. I don't really want to take them off. I'll tell you what, we'll bring in Declan Rice and we'll bring in Bernardo for his debut. Elsewhere, Van Dijk's going to come off, I think, for Tomori at 34 years old. We've got to look after Grandpa Van Dijk in this team. I call him Grandpa Van Dijk. Obviously, 34 isn't that old, but relative to the rest of our squad, he is like an old man. Anyway, we're on the attack here, potentially. Gvardiol on the near side. We're looking for goal number six. I mean, we've got a corner. I expect us to score from every corner that we get. But we're not going to score from this one. Subs are made. Still 5-1. Five minutes left here. Yusuf Demir with another corner, potentially whips it into Tamori, who I think was pushed in the back here. We're going to see a penalty given. Now, Calvert-Lewin and Mbappe if this is given, are both on hat-tricks. So who is going to be the man to take the penalty? Who has the most alpha energy to get the ball? I'll tell you who it is. It's Kylian Mbappe, who smashes it into the bottom corner. He's going to make it 6-1, gets his hat-trick. We can be quite happy about that. Can I say 166 million well spent? It, it might be a tad premature, I suppose. But 6-1 up. This is the kind of performance I wanted to start the year. After a rocky first five... We've put that behind us and we've run out pretty comfortable victors here in a rather eventful game, to be honest. So a really, really confident display to start the season. We go top of the table. Man City, the only other team who won by a similar margin. They won 5-0 against Aston Villa after James Ward-Prowse was sent off after 15 minutes. Looking at things here, they actually scored three goals in the extra time at the end of the game to really notch up the score. As for ourselves, the kind of win that we expect to get, nevertheless, nice to get off. To winning ways and after a bit of a wobbly start we set the record straight we threw a water bottle Demir picked up man of the match again with a 10.0 he's absolutely brilliant so a good little start to the season Van Dijk signed uh, the other guy Bernardo was his name I can't he's not as exciting as Van Dijk is he so I forget his name I think it's Bernardo the Portuguese centre mid also signed still a little bit of transfer budget if we want to do anything I do suspect things are going to calm down a little bit now. In terms of when we're going to be back next time, we have got Liverpool and Man City back to back. I am tempted to do those two games just because I think they could be pretty pivotal in the title battle um, throughout this year. Looking at things here, we are the favourites to win the league. The kind of media are backing us to do it. We've got the majority of the players in the media dream 11. I feel like Liverpool and Man City are going to be good little early tests to see. Are, are we really at the level that the media think we're at? If you've enjoyed today's video, as always, do drop a like on it. Helps out massively. I'll be back tomorrow with another. I hope to see you then. And well, until next time, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you all in a bit. I'm out.